Hello there everybody, a Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel and today is Tuesday, October 20, 2020. I thought I would um, talk about a, an application today that I'm using. Uh, it's I'm on my Farron OS Linux system right now and the application that I wanted to get into and, and, and talk to you about is called DocuWiki. And we'll talk about what DocuWiki is and we'll go out to the website, take a look at that. And then I'll show you how to install it how I install it and then how you can install it if you like and we'll look at that right after this okay I'm back and uh, I'm up on the DocuWiki website right now and the uh, URL for that is docuwiki.org Here's the website and uh, everything you need to know about DocuWiki you can learn from this website here. Here's an explanation of what DocuWiki is. I'm, just, I'm not going to read it, but uh, you can read it for yourself. But basically, if you think of Wikipedia, uh, where you can have users logging in to a website uh, like Wikipedia and uh, each person able to update a portion of that website, add to it, take from it things that belong to them and things like that. Uh, that's what DocuWiki is for, except DocuWiki is structured more for personal use as opposed to, you know, or teams or groups as opposed to the world. And um, you can um, put this on a local system and use it for things like keeping notes or writing your own uh, short stories, novels, uh, you know, technical manuals, uh, that kind of thing. I use it personally for my own workflow, and that workflow right now is keeping notes. Uh, documentation, things like uh, writing short stories. Uh, I eventually want to get into writing a novel and I will do that with DocuWiki. This particular uh, uh, video is not DocuWiki itself. I'm not going to show you how to get in and use DocuWiki. I'll do that in a follow-on video. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing in this video, part one, is I'm going to be showing you how to actually install it. Uh, you can go to this website here, which is uh, the download.docuwiki.org, and here you can hit this download button and download various uh, versions of DocuWiki. Here I've got the stable recommended version with a direct link. Uh, there are older versions, and there is a development uh, snapshot as well. Uh, you've got DocuWiki in, I believe, about 50 different languages. Um, and you can install it with all of those languages or you can install it with just your particular language. Uh, you can convert what you do in another language uh, in DocuWiki as well. And you have popular plugins as well for DocuWiki once you get it installed and up and running. Things like CAPTCHA plugin, uh, upgrading it, uh, RAP plugin, translation, etc., etc. Uh, but if you do click on the download button here, it says just a moment and you can join the community. Uh, you can follow. Let me go ahead and cancel that because I've already followed that and downloaded that. You can donate to, to DocuWiki as well to help support the project. Uh, if you want to do that, I highly encourage you to do that. You can become a Patreon. Uh, you can be a GitHub sponsor. You can pay with Bitcoin or you can pay with your PayPal account. Uh, they'll take, take your money whichever way you want to give it to them because I know they'll appreciate that. Uh, you can come over now associated with DocuWiki, as I mentioned or alluded to anyway, there is a user forum for DocuWiki and here it is. Uh, if you sign up for an account here using the sign up link uh, and then log in, you can access this and get uh, probably every question you have about DocuWiki answered. But moreover, what you can do is uh, you can um, log in to the DocuWiki website uh, online and you can use your forum login. So here's the login page right here for DocuWiki.org. You can test out DocuWiki before you even install it. But if you use that login that you that you use to create your user forum account, you can use that when you log in here. So you can click on login. And for instance, I've already got it uh, set up here in my robo form. Um, if I click DocuWiki, it actually logs me in and here I am. So I've logged into my instance of DocuWiki and I can change things and add to it and, and do all kinds of things. So uh, that's that's how it, DocuWiki uh, looks and it's very, it's very nice, very clean. I do have, like I, said, like I said, I have a local version set up. 
I will show you what the local version looks like. Let me go out to my bookmarks and go down to Doku Wiki, and here's my local copy. And so here's I've got my short story called The Final Exam. I've got it set up. Now this is running locally on my um, Raspberry Pi Model 4 and it's set up on 192.168.1.125 which is the IP address of that Raspberry Pi and I'm using port 8086 because my other ports 80 and 8080 through 8085 are being used right now for other applications and so I chose one that is not being used which is 8086 uh, and set it up and so this is my um, Final exams. This is my short story. There is a syntax associated with Docker Wiki, and there's plenty of videos. There's plenty of, of documentation on the Docker Wiki website on how to go about setting it up, like you see here, with sections and subsections and uh, that kind of thing. Also, down at the bottom, I've got a, an about the author link. Here I am, my picture tells a little bit about me, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Uh, this is the local copy now running on my local LAN. The world doesn't see this, uh, but if I wanted to upload it or use a reverse proxy or do something associated with a, a domain that I own, which I do have one, uh, that I may use it for that, and then I can uh, make that reverse proxy uh, touch this particular IP address and uh, put it on the web if I really wanted to do that. Now, the thing about the Docker Wiki here, the personal copy, let me get back to the top. Once you have a, a section a title and, and more than two sections, I think it's three sections, then it automatically generates a table of contents for you. It's just really slick because I've got each section of my short story here on the page and if I wanted to go for instance and jump straight to section four which is going back, if I just click on that hyperlink it takes me right to section four going back. Alright, so that's, this is really cool. Um, a thing that you can use for uh, you know table of contents just like any other table of contents for uh, any documentation that you might have and in my case a short story you might have for a novel you might want to go to chapter 14 of your novel or you come over to your table of contents and click on chapter 14 it'll take you right there so the docu wiki is very uh, robust it's uh, clean it's crisp looking uh, I like it uh, I like the way the syntax allows me to um, go in and just change things on the fly and very easily too so um, let me show you how I installed it I did not use the download link here okay and you may uh, choose let me go back out to it here you may choose to do the same and if you want to do that you can but it's gonna be a little work for you um, I did a previous video on this and um, I will reference you to that these that previous video which shows you how to do some of this stuff that I'm not going to cover in detail today uh, for instance, one of the things that we're going to be talking about is Open Media Vault, and I'm not going to be installing Open Media Vault today. So if you go to that link, which I will put down below this video, then uh, you can follow that video and you can uh, install Open Media Vault. You can install uh, install Portainer, which you will need as well. And then I show you in that other video how to capture or grab the image for Docker Wiki. I will show you that in this video, but um, you know, just want to let you know that this video is not going to be as comprehensive as the previous one. Uh, so I will need to have you reference that previous um, video. It's not installing Docker Wiki, but it's installing another application. So we'll get to that right now. Okay, I'm out in my favorite web browser, which is Brave. Uh, if you haven't tried Brave, give it a give it a look. Uh, it's called B R A V E Brave Web Browser. It, once you go to Brave, you'll never go back. It's a great web browser and it protects you from ads and saves you on bandwidth and saves time while you're surfing the web. All right, so uh, I've got some bookmarks out here. And uh, in, in order to install DocuWiki the way I did it, you're going to need a couple of different things. All right, you're going to need something called Open Media Vault, which is a software package or application uh, that is accessed via the web once it's installed. Um, and that allows you to set up what's called NAS shares or network attached storage shares and in particular uh, you're going to be having to uh, create a folder on your uh, NAS or your network attached storage called config because that's where uh, Docker Hub uh, applications uh, are installed uh, on using this process that I'm going to show you. You need that config folder to, to exist and you need to be sharing it on your network attached storage LAN. Okay? 
And so let me go to bookmarks here, go down to uh, Open Media Vault, and come to Open Media Vault here. Let's open this thing up, and here it is. And let me go here and log into it. So once I log into it, uh, here it is. There's a couple of things that you need to know about, and there is a previous video, as I mentioned, which I'll put a link down below this video, uh, that I go into more detail about this. But there are a couple of things you need. One is you need to know uh, services under the services category. You'll need to set up the config folder in the SMB CIFS, which is the server message block uh, common internet file system. All right. If you click on that, this is uh, what I'm talking about. If I go to shares. I have all these shares set up out on my network attached storage and one of them is called config and that one is on uh, I think file store vol 2 I believe. So if you go over here to shared folders and click on that store vol 2 that's correct is the folder or device rather which is a spinning hard drive where I've created my config folder uh, to house my docker images. Okay. Here is the absolute path to that, and we'll need that information here later on. But this is my Docker configuration. That's why it's called config. My Docker configuration um, folder out on my network attached storage. Now, why is that important? That's important because what we're going to be doing here with Docker Wiki is rather than using that download link that I showed you earlier and downloading and installing the product there, we're going to install Docker Wiki as a Docker container in another application called Portainer. All right, so let me go up here, click a new tab, and go to my bookmarks and go to OMV and let me go down to Portainer and let me bring up Portainer. And here it is, let me log into it. And so log into Portainer. You can set up your own logins here. And you, as you can see, I've got seven stacks, 11 containers set up. If I click on the containers link and go out here to containers, one of the containers that I have set up is called Docu Wiki, okay? And it is currently running. If I click in here and I uh, hit the stop button, I can actually stop the, the service so that Docu Wiki is no longer running, okay? Once it stops, I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about. So Docu Wiki drops down here to the not running areas. So it's stopped, okay? So if I go out here on the web, and this is an application you touch via the web, from um, your Raspberry Pi or any server that you have uh, where you've created a network attached storage, which is what I've done with my Raspberry Pi's uh, single board computer. If I click bookmarks and go down here to Docker Wiki and try to touch my local copy, I'm going to get site can't be reached. All right. So if I go back to Portainer and I select Docker Wiki here and I start it, okay, restart it, or not restart it, but start it. So now that it is running, okay, if I go back to here and refresh the page, it should now come up, and it does. All right, so how did that happen? Uh, how that happened is Docker Wiki requires either the Apache web server or Nginx web server or a web server of some kind to produce this page, all right, on the local system. Um, it does not, however, require a database, and that's one of the good things about Docker Wiki. It's not so complex that you need to set up a, a database like you would with a media wiki for instance if you've heard of media wiki uh, or in Wikipedia you would need a, a database to control it you don't need that here with docker wiki why because docker wiki is really designed for your documentation for documenting your things for your workflow uh, if you want to write stories and, and novels and that kind of thing with it you can but it's basically for technical writing manual writing documentation for various applications that you might have and, and things of that sort. All right, so let me go ahead and close this. And uh, so here's Portainer. Portainer was installed in Open Media Vault, and I cover that in the, uh, the video I'll point you to. And Portainer is where all of my stacks are deployed to the containers, which are Docker images that are created from stacks, which get deployed out to a container and then are run like uh, Docker Wiki is here. Now, I do not want to destroy Docker Wiki, so I'm not going to delete this and reinstall it, but I will show you exactly what you need to do to get this up and running uh, the way that you should. All right. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to simulate installing Docker Wiki and I'll walk you through the process. So let's go up to the stacks link here in Portainer. All right. And uh, even though we have Docker Wiki already, I'm going to call it something else. All right. I call it Dan's Docker Wiki. 
I'm going to say add a stack here. And uh, I guess I could install a second version of this under a different name and it would be okay. So I'm going to call this in the name field up here. I'm going to call this Dan's second docu wiki. All lowercase letters, by the way. All right. And come down here. Now, here's an area. It's called the web editor area. All right. How do I, what do I put in there? All right. What I put in there is this. If I go out on the, the web and I've got a bookmark, I'll put a link to this as well down below the video. And I go down to Open Media Vault and come over to something called Linux Server Images. It takes me to this website, which is called linuxserver.io. And this is where your Docker Hub images are. All right. There's a home here button, which we're on the home uh, screen right now, the home page. But if you go over here to images and click images, it brings up something called the fleet Linux server images. All right. If I go into the search field and I type in docu or start typing docu wiki, it brings up docu wiki here, Linux server forward slash docu wiki. All right. If I click on it, all right, it opens up this secondary page. Under Docker Hub, which is uh, where this image resides, there is a, a link to this actual image called Linux Server forward slash Docker Wiki. Now, if I click on it, brings up this other Docker Hub page, and it is the Linux Server Docker Wiki page. All right, tells you a little bit about it. Uh, you can come up here uh, for sign in. You can explore other images. You can search for other images that are available here from here as well without going back out to Portainer if you don't want to. But if I come down and this is talking about the Linux server IO, this tells a little bit of information about Docker Wiki, all right, what it is, what it's used for, the supported architectures that apply to it. And um, I have Docker Wiki running or actually Open Media Vault rather and Portainer running on my Raspberry Pi Model 4, which is a single board computer. If you've never used a Raspberry Pi, just type in raspberrypi.org and that'll take you out to Raspberry Pi. You can get one of these uh, single board computers for about, I think they're going for about uh, $70 right now for the Model 4. Uh, and they do come in the 8 gig version, uh, I believe. Uh, this one I have uh, running right now. Um, that I'm supporting my uh, Open Media Vault and Portainer with is actually a 4 gig model. But one of the things that's important is is that uh, Raspberry Pis use something called the ARM64 uh, and ARMHF images, okay, uh, architecture, not the x86-64. So you'll need to have any Docker image that you want to install in Portainer, like we're doing here, uh, and in Open Media Vault. You'll need to make sure that that architecture is supported and it is in this case so we're good to go so let's come down to not the docker C cli here but the docker compose which is the recommended okay what i want to do is i want to left click here and i want to drag and uh, highlight all this information in this docker compose image okay i want to right click here and i want to copy that then i want to come back out to portainer all right i want to come down here and I want to left click right in front of the hash mark. All right. I want to right click and I want to paste that information that I just copied. All right. From um, from Linux Hub or Docker Hub, LinuxServer.io. Okay. So uh, very important to note is this: if you want to install a stack and then deploy it, create a, a, a container application, it's important to know that usually. Typically, the first seven lines of your container uh, do not need to be touched at all. All right, the container is called DocuWiki. That's fine. The image is this one here. That's fine. The version is the 2.1 version. That's okay in this case. So we don't need to touch that. But on starting on line number eight, we do need to be concerned about it. All right. So we have something called the PUID and the GPGID. Okay, which is the process user ID and the process group ID. Now, the values of 1000 and 1000 here will not work on this particular image, all right? How do I get those? Well, a couple of things you need to know, uh, and I'll show you how you get the values for PUID and PGID. I'm logged in to my Portainer app as admin. You can see that right here. 
okay, in the upper right hand corner. I'm logged in as admin. Now if I was logged in as anything else, I would need to use that, but I'm logged in as admin, and so I'm going to use that. I'm going to go out on the uh, terminal in Linux. Okay, I've hopefully got this large enough where you can see it. I think I do. Now let me go ahead and bump that up. So let me uh, see if I can bump that up for you. you make it a little bit larger. There we go. All right, so we need to get on the Raspberry Pi. So let me SSH into my Raspberry Pi. So I do an SSH Pi at and the IP address of the Pi is 192.168.1.125. Hit enter. Enter the uh, passphrase uh, that I have set up. And I'm in my Pi, okay? And so one of the things I need to do right now is I'm not a root user. I'm actually just a standard user on the Pi. And so I'm going to log in interactively as root. So I'll issue the command sudo dash i and I'll put in the uh, um, I don't need to put in a password Here's, it's already logged me in as root so I'm a root user okay I'll need to be root you'll need to be root in order to make this work if you're on your Pi or your server for that matter and now that I'm logged in as root I need to run a command called ID and then the use the username that I'm logged into on Portainer which is admin okay, because that is what the Raspberry Pi sees because the Portainer application is running inside of Open Media Vault on the Raspberry Pi. So if I do that and hit enter, it's going to pull up two bits of information. It's going to pull up the UID, okay, which is 998, which is admin, and it's going to pull up the GID, which is 100, and that's for regular users, okay. We can ignore this part right here. We don't really need to concern ourselves with this. Really the only two things we need is the UID and the GID. Now this corresponds to the PUID in the Docker Compose image and this corresponds to the PGID in that Docker Compose image which is 100. So let's remember that 998 and 100. So let me go ahead and get out of this All right, and close my terminal. Get that out of the way. Come back here. Let's come down here to the PUID and let's uh, backspace and replace the nine uh, 1000 with 998 and then come down to the PGID and replace that with 100 so we've got that set to the two values that we need to set there now um, time zone I happen to know what my time zone is but if you don't happen to know what that is there's a good way to find it and that is to get onto your open media vault application and come back up to date and time and come across and here it is it's time zone is under settings and it's America forward slash new underscore York or New York so I'm in the New York time zone which is Eastern Standard Time for me and so I'm going to go ahead and right click and copy that and then I'm going to come back to um, Portainer where I have the docker image and I'm going to highlight the time zone or actually just this part of it I believe is all I need to do and then right click and paste that in okay so America forward slash new underscore York alright next section that we need to concern ourselves with is the volume now notice it says path to app data forward slash config now that's pointing to that config folder in open media vault alright so if I come back down here to my shared folders um, here it's pointing to this config folder right here config forward slash and that's the absolute path to it so let's get back to Portainer and um, so what we need to do is we need to figure out what that path is to the container um, so let's go back here to open media vault and to do that we just need to come to this uh, absolute path section for the config folder that we created which was created in the previous video we need to right click it and just say inspect and that's going to open up our um, inspection window here and then we'll come over here to where it says forward slash SRV dev di disk by label double click that and then right click and copy that okay and then come back here to Portainer and then highlight this section where it says path to app data config but don't capture the colon just up to that point where past uh, where the word config is right click that then and Let's go ahead and paste that in. And so that's the absolute path to where the config folder is. Forward slash SRV, forward slash dev, dash disk, 
dash buy dash label dash store vault 2 in my case it'll be different than yours forward slash config and then what folder do I want to put the application in I want to put it in the same folder that I named my um, uh, docker image uh, container or stack image rather which is forward slash uh, Dan's second uh, docker wiki okay so Dan's second Docu wiki all right and then colon config all right come down here to the port section uh, I'm already using port 80 and probably in your case you will as well be using port 80 for something uh, on your local area network so you're gonna have to change the uh, internal one not the external keep this one port 80 leave that one alone but on the internal one change port 80 to an available port now I know that my port 80 is taken I know my point ports 8080 and 80 through 86 now are taken, so I need to change this one to 8087, all right, or it won't work. This section is optional here, uh, and so I'm just going to go ahead and remove it. I don't need it. Let me go ahead and delete that. All right, and uh, let me just backspace. All right, and get rid of that, and then we can just leave the rest the way it is. Actually, let me eliminate the line because that might be a problem. All right, so let's uh, drop that section out. And now we have everything ready to go to actually deploy this particular um, stack. All right, so stack that we call Dan's second Docu Wiki. All right, so let's come down here and let's deploy the stack. Uh, it says that there's a container called Docu Wiki already in use. Okay, I think we can easily fix that. The problem is we have two containers with the same name. So we have DocuWiki. I've just changed that to DocuWiki2. It was DocuWiki, so I'm going to change that to DocuWiki2. Hopefully that'll get us around this problem. So let me come down. And now let's click Deploy the Stack and see if that works. And it looks like it's working. And it says that the stack was successfully deployed. And so now we have Dan's second DocuWiki set up here. Okay. Um, however, it's probably not ready to use yet, and the way we can tell is if we click in this box here and select a link, come up to the editor, you can come down and um, looks like uh, it is actually running. So it's running. I select it here. Um, looks like everything is set up, so I think it may be running for us. We come back to container. And so with DockerWiki 2 running, let's go ahead and see if we can touch it. Um, port 8087, remember, and the IP address is not this one here. Okay, it's 192.168.1.125. So let me click the plus sign in my browser. And you can do this from any web browser on your LAN. All right, if it can touch 192.168.1.125 or whatever the IP address is of your Raspberry Pi single board computer, you can do this. And so let me do 192.168.1.125, port 8087, which is what we gave it. Hit enter, and that should open up the Docker Wiki. And there it is. All right, so that's the one we just created. So we have successfully deployed to the IP address of the Raspberry Pi a secondary Docker Wiki at port 8087. And uh, as I said earlier, you know, if you, uh, you have a reverse proxy running, and you want to, you know, go through your uh, term, your um, router, and uh, port forward uh, the IP address and 8087 port uh, to that reverse proxy, uh, and set it up so that you have a fully qualified domain name instead of what we have here. Then you can set this up to be touchable on the internet as well. I'm not going to do that, and so um, we have successfully set up a docu wiki now it's what the uh, part one of this video was designed to do was to show you how to deploy your own docu wiki no there's, there's no login here there's no need for a login because this is your personal docu wiki uh, and and so you only you see it okay uh, if somebody else on your LAN however goes to this IP address and port they will see it as well but you can control that alright so Nobody else outside of the your LAN, in other words, uh, i.e. outside the LAN onto the internet will be able to see what you're doing here. 
And so we'll cover in part two how to get in and use the syntax and set up a uh, basic Docker wiki. And I'll show you how to do that in part two of the video. So if this particular video was helpful for you, uh, please uh, hit the thumbs up on the video. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, the Linux Unix Tech channel, go ahead and do that. Hit the bell next to it and then select all so that you can be alerted every time I upload a video. I will put links to everything that we discussed here down below the video. And so you won't need to remember that or go back and watch it necessarily um, unless you just want to. That's fine. But uh, anyway, hope this was helpful and uh, have a good day. And this is Data Pioneer signing off the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.